this morning will be easy. It will be on technique of reconstruction in pancreatoduronectomy. And to make my message short is, I will elaborate, of course, later on. But when, you're, when, when you are an experienced pancreatic surgeon, you can do what reconstruction you want as soon as you feel safe with it. And as soon as the results are like this, then you can do whatever you want. So the basic question when you talk about the technique of reconstruction after a Whipple procedure or a modified Whipple procedure is, do you use a single loop, a single roux and Y, or a double roux and Y? Theoretically, three, all these three procedures, all, the, all these three principles have basic advantages and disadvantages. And I will now show you the review of the literature and uh, what is our experience in Hamburg. This is the single Roux and Y, and it basically consists of an isolated limb covering the uh, pancreatogegenostomy. It was first introduced um, by Machado in 1976. Um, and uh, the rest of the gastrointestinal tract is reconstructed by one loop using a brown anastomosis. It's, I have to admit, my personal standard. It preserves an isolated pancreatic biliary and gastric drainage. And, and theoretically, it avoids activation of pancreatic enzymes in the anastomotic areas it avoids by using the brown anastomosis a synchronous bile reflux and a possible development of acute retention pancreatitis. This is uh, the double Roux and Y, where the, uh, uh, the jejunal limb to the um, pancreas and the jejunal limb to the uh, colidocal duct are isolated from the gastrointestinal passage. It was uh, introduced in 1996, and um, it has not gained widespread acceptance. Now, double Roux and Y, this, is, um, this was the, um, uh, the uh, rationale behind this, improves the outcome in the case of anastomotic leakage, since isolated pancreatic biliary or gastric leaks would be less severe and easy.